Isn't it a shame? I'm supposed to be a, an accountant. Oh, oh, I'm going live. Okay, darling. Um, Mama, take it away. There's no sound. Winnie is here. Mom, are we okay? Okay. Meet the hosts, OJ Ajayfia. Mom, mom, but you, Winnie Fred, you are the everyone and welcome to today's show as you already know and as we earlier advertised it is family finance many households are struggling with their personal finances i wish it wasn't true but certainly looks like it is it's something that needs to be taken seriously and not sugar-coated the more we brush off and neglect the state of household finances the worse the problem becomes. Is you are not, if you are not a financially challenging, in a financially challenging situation, excuse me, there's a good chance that you know someone who is struggling to pay their bills, struggling to increase their income and get ahead. The difference between those struggling and those in a financially secure position primarily comes down to a few things, planning, resourcefulness, and literacy. Unfortunately, the majority of households remain uncertain about where to start with all three of those things. We are going to paint a better picture by throwing out the following questions to both the audience and the host. Thank you guys once again for joining us. Feel free to use the raise hand option or type your questions on the chat booth both on Zoom and Facebook. Also know that over time, Onoche Kitchen will continue with your questions even after the show has stopped recording. And that's because we love you guys so much. So my first question is to Moma. What does having money mean to your family? Having money means the world to me as a person and um, to my family. Um, I think I've answered the question. Can you means the world. No, I, I no, I need I <laughs> because need I would not be smiling. If there's no money. <laughs> Explanation. My family. Because because I could be somebody's world. Okay, me as a person can be somebody's world. Hey, okay, they love. And then world. on the other hand, somebody. <laughs> On the other hand, somebody needs a room full of people to make her world. Yeah. So when you say money, 
means the world to you and your family. I need a little bit of explanation, please. All right. What it means is it would make my world complete. Um, when you have this okay. love, and have the children, I have the family, and have everything, and you don't have money to provide what they need, the world is not complete. Mm -mm. My world is not complete. It is not. Because even if, okay, taking it back to when I was in secondary school, if I run out of provision, mm -hmm. milk, bone vita, that I, can, I don't buy myself, I fall ill. So now that I'm a grown woman, that I, can afford, <laughs> I remember, yeah, that I can afford to make the money. If my account is running dry, I start having a headache. So Why would you fall ill? You. you know, you yeah. remember we were you know, I wish, I wish I have that same. I, I, Mama, I wish Mama's I have that. milk was this big. Mm. What did you say? I said, why would you fall ill? We were coming to school with a regular container of um, thick milk. But yours was the big one, like this. So And it went very, and it went very fast. It went very fast for some reason. No, so Ifama was kind because okay. when others finished, she, she gave shares, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I knew. I used to see her giving. She never I gave me. I love though. sharing. Yeah, but I, I wish I'm I will. I wish I would get sick. I wish I would get sick if I if I'm broke because maybe to make me start saving because I have friends who when they get like my brother is like that, my mom is like that. If they if their money is running short, I'm fine when I'm broke. I'm like <laughs> laying down on. Life goes on. on. Yeah, I wish I have something that bothers me, like the, the you know. No, no, money me a headache, headache, but I don't have money. Yes, money much headache. has done bother me. I, I, I think like, about do it. Do anything extra, mm -hmm. but I feel uncomfortable. So I like having the base, knowing that know. I, I'm, I'm not lacking. Yeah, not not being very ex rich. No, we don't. Yeah, but at least, yeah, just okay. yeah, makes me happy. Okay, Obi, would so you, you like to say smiling, something? Know that there is money somewhere. Is Obi still here? Yes, I am. I just want to quickly feed something for my son, then I'll, I'll come back. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. We're happy yeah. to have you. The same here. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, okay. thanks. Yeah. I'm seeing Walksman for the first time. Is that our Nena? <laughs> that's Walksman, yes. That's me. Oh! <laughs> Nena. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. I'm so happy I'm to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So who else would like to tell us what um, having money means for their family? Anyone I, in the audience? Ben, ben would you like to? Nayam, I'm coming to you. Don't worry. Benson, would you like to say something? Okay. You may talk. I, I sent a chat. I sent in a chat. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Let me read. Okay. Benson says, having the basic family needs met. Yeah. So I think he's on the same boat with you, Ikunanyam. You don't need so much. Yeah, I think, yeah, having that and then having extra, which I, um like, I think it's a good thing if you, if you, if you could have a saving spirit, like, having like after paying your bills mm -hmm. um because Something we're we're delay. africans we still need um money for the extended family whether we like it or not mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. meeting your immediate family's basic needs the extended family vacation money and then having extra you know in the bank okay for me that okay. would be what well, like having a cushion money okay yeah. yeah just like you said for me as well i don't need much if I can just get by every day, know that, okay, fine, when I get home, there's food to eat. Mm -hmm. And the extra I would like to have is for medical expenses. Yes, yeah. Sickness never gives you um, yes. a notice. Yeah, when people come to me asking for money, I say to them, I would have felt better, um, not like I'm happy to help someone who is ill. I don't wish you sickness. But at the same time, you can't come and tell me, oh, my wife just had a baby. Somebody wrote you a letter like nine months ago that he's coming. Mm. And you didn't prepare. Yeah. But if you say, oh, my wife um, is about to have a baby or just had a baby, but it was an emergency CS. Yes. Okay. I would willingly look for, because I always look for even when I don't have to give. Yeah. Do you understand? I'll feel better than somebody telling me, oh, I'm planning my wedding and I need your support. It yeah. annoys me. 
because those are fundamental expenses. Yeah. If it, like I keep saying, sickness does not give any notice and it comes in any form at any time. Yeah. So if someone suddenly needs help to cushion, you know, medical bills, I'll feel better. And on my yeah. own, I would also want to have sh just in case sickness comes, mm -hmm. let me yeah. have something to start off with. So you know, we don't have any health care system here and some hospitals yeah. until you make a deposit, they're not going to let you. So for cases like that, I would really want to have that extra. Okay, that oh, yeah. takes us to question number two, which I'm gonna throw. It says, what does it mean to be good with money? Auntie Chi, are you good with money? Happy New Year, I'll get to, I'll check it to everyone. <laughs> happy New Year, my sister. Get to have you, Auntie Chi. Guys, happy, why is, I've not seen my very- We missed fine you. Fan. Me too, I missed yeah, all of yeah. you. Yeah, we missed you too. <laughs> uh, oh, you said being good with I uh, know I'm not good with money. I can save for 30 okay, days. So you don't know what more, it means. <laughs> I can save for 30 days, like stress myself for 30 days and save and then blow the money, the, the whole money the next day. At least you're better than me. You save for 30 days. I find it the next day. <laughs> I can save, try and save and save. And then when I've seen a certain amount with me, I'll be like, what? I have this money, I'll blow it up in one in one place. <laughs> Welcome to our country. <laughs> it's very scary. Oh my goodness. Chizo, are you on duty? Okay, maybe Chizo is on duty. I'm on mute um, duty. I can speak. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So what does it mean to be good with money? Uh, I, I think um, being good with money. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. Sorry about that. Happy New Year, darling. Yeah. Being good with money is just having a plan a budget about your expenditure and how the saving um okay. my personally my own understanding about being good with money is at every, every month because i am i'm ai am not a business person i'm i work i work so i earn yeah, salary i know yes so i i expect to save at least a certain portion maybe 10 percent or maybe more of my salary mm -hmm. every month mm -hmm. uh, because uh, like uh, um, Sisoje said, you know, for emergency, you never know. Then I, I should be able to care for my immediate needs. I don't think I, I wouldn't want to find myself in a situation where I would have to ask someone to help me sort myself out. Uh, it's not a thing of pride. Even while I was in Nigeria, I never did, but it's just that I've been in a situation whereby someone has had to sort my needs and they didn't do it the way I wanted. So I think... I'm better at sorting my own needs out personally than someone else Myself. for personal mm -hmm. reasons. Um, okay. So also living within your means um, because being Nigerians, you know, it's, it's, we, it's second nature to us to, to want to try and do, and do a little bit more. And sorry about that. And some more. Um, the, one of the things I have learned from living abroad is that some, some, somehow they manage to live within their means. Somehow, what well, people have come across, they manage to live within their means. And that's something I am working towards. Trying to live within your means, trying to make sure that you budget for every expenditure and something coming into your account. And also, if you have a chance to get in an extra mm -hmm. income, that, that's, that's what I, I understand that to be. Yeah. Okay. I agree with you. Um... Brenton says to be good with money is not spending more than you earn. Yes. Okay. And for me, to be good with money means um, if it is something I cannot afford twice, I think twice about it. I want a case where if I want to buy this phone, I should be able to buy two oh, wow. comfortably. Excellent. Not when I finish buying this phone, I'll be looking for transport money to go home. That's but if I'm going to buy this phone, I yeah, consider it. I say to myself, can I buy this phone a second time? That's the that's theory I use whenever I want to spend. And it has helped me, actually. Okay. So, Winnie. So, does it, does it include there? cars? Does it include cars? Like, if you want to buy a car, no, you have no, to buy a car. No, that's why I said basically because for most okay, things for I do. Not for okay. major expenses. Okay. okay the car I'm that. using, I can't even afford. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that then dash me <laughs> okay all right okay Winnie go ahead <laughs> welcome to dashing hi everybody hey Winnie how are you 
<laughs> check it in once again. Uh, OJ, you cracked me up with that <laughs> that last <laughs> comment. <laughs> or like some of us, we buy buying our cars, so we're not complaining. <laughs> so <laughs> to my question. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Did, did I, uh, I was telling you. Really, some, bad, some people's husband, you say, meet my lovely husband for, for some. You say, now my husband be this. So OJ has meet my lovely husband. So <laughs> let, let's go. <laughs> that really cracked me up. I've been holding it inside of me. I didn't know what. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I didn't even, I didn't even know when I gave the response actually. <laughs> okay, to my question Did your family talk about money growing up? <laughs> okay, um, Worksman, <laughs> did your family talk about money growing up? We all grew up together, so <laughs> we know. So, Whatever she workman. says goes. <laughs> Exactly. No, we, we never had the chance to talk about money. The parents decide and they just tell you. <laughs> exactly. You never had the you just decide and they tell you what they're doing. You don't have no, any say. You were hardly part of the decision making. No, we were hardly. I wasn't. They just made up their mind and decided to tell us. But, works, man. You could still remember yes. your dad telling you, this is the last money I have. I'm giving you. Every oh, money they spend is their last money. money. Mm -hmm. this, this is always the last. last. This is the last. This is always fair. <laughs> this is my last money. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but they decide I what. Say, what of you? Did they talk about money growing up? Um, not really, as in um educating us on how to spend money. But I know I took after my father. My father was a big spender, and whenever he gets buff, like my mother used to handle um his finances because my father that's the only thing i know about money because my father didn't know how to spend and everything but not educating us like how to spend money you when you get your income you this best you know what i mean they didn't know i didn't have that um uh, education no we didn't just but for my mom it was always like you know i'm a teacher you've not paid us these two two months three months with that in mind growing up i decided i would never work for the government yeah. You know, I never wanted to be old, stuff like that. My aunt so, was, my aunt just, was uh, ridiculous because my dad will always, every time we ask my dad for money, I mean, we're nine in the house. So, I mean, oh. I have like people that we grown up. But every mm -hmm. time you ask my dad for money, he will tell you, oh, you know, I don't have any money. Let me go and see if I can borrow from the court clerk. Mind you, he was a judge. So it was only when I grew up. And he's borrowing from the court clerk. I imagine, like, can, can you imagine that? Like, I never understood it. It was only when I grew up that I said, wait, oh, how in the world is it possible that he's not borrowing money from the class? But that was always what he would say. He would say, oh, but I would see him when people came to the house from the village or whatever, he would give them money. But when you ask him money, you say, oh, no, 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 this is the money that uh, they asked me to hold for them, or this is money. So we, and again, he did, we didn't grow up having cash. Yes. Like my dad would never call you and give you money. You know, but all your needs will be met. Like if I were even when I was going back to school, yeah, yeah. they will buy everything that you need. Pocket money was hard for him. There were other ways that I could get pocket money from my dad, but he he, he didn't believe that children should handle money. Mm. You know, even mm. me as an adult, when I see people give, yeah, when I see people give kids money, I yeah, think I cringe. <laughs> you know, well that's where I was. But it didn't. It hasn't stopped me from being financially irresponsible. I must say. You said you said I'm other chill. ways you could get money from your dad. That means you know that I could deal, and uh, You had to now. What will you do? <laughs> <laughs> when I was in secondary school, now you tell him oh, that the I make a lesson. No, I make an English lesson. I make a this lesson. You have to pay oh, this one, yeah. that one. Uh -huh. That's the only way you could get money because if you depended on my dad to give you pocket money. Ooh, uh, you will tell you don't want to go. Chinwen, Chinwen, yeah. I understand why your dad will say he doesn't have money. That this is I do that with my kids because if you don't do that, they they will milk you dry. They come to you every so every time I tell my kids I don't have money, I don't have money. They leave me alone. Yeah, so I I do that with my kids. So I do that. I'm My dad is annoying. He will tell you oh, don't worry, don't worry. You know what? Tomorrow morning, once I get to the court, I will you know see if I can borrow from the clerk. 
Mm. And then we believed him. That's the sad part. We actually believe well, when I grew up, yeah. I started knowing one and two. I was like, wait, too. this man, <laughs> this man <laughs> fooled us for the longest, you know. But you know, I think um, yeah, I think at the end of the day, but I think my dad was really strict about money. You know, like he wasn't stingy, but I think he made he, he wasn't like oh see oh I have money oh I have. In fact, sometimes when you come home and tell my dad that you see now other children, I say who are other children? <laughs> Which other children? They yeah, look at this person. Our parents were not lying to us. They uh, were lying to us. I know. We had the money, <laughs> but they no one give us. Yeah, <laughs> that so, that's... is it. My next question is okay. if your spouse spends hundred dollars or one thousand dollars and didn't tell you, would you be upset? Personally, that would not tell you. you. And they didn't tell you. Yes, and, and didn't, didn't tell, not tell you. you. Honestly, yeah, I didn't tell you. That Can would I answer that? really blow me off the roof. Go ahead. Um if I have, I have to give, I'll be honest, obviously, and I'll give two, circum, um, two circumstances to it. I've never in my many, many years in partnership and of marriage, we don't contribute into one post. But I'm that doesn't mean we that. don't do things together. Yeah. So if he spent a thousand pounds, because I do pounds, provided he's done his own family contribution, it's none of my problem. I but if you. he hasn't done what he needs to do at home mm. and he spent a thousand pounds, then yes, I'll hit the roof. Yeah. So and this again, is it depends that. on what he spent it on. It doesn't matter what, what he spent it on. Let me, let me ask you this. If, if let me ask that money what on health insurance. No, if you wait, mm. let, me, let me ask you this. What if you guys are just managing money? I'm trying to manage, right? There's no money. But you're trying to manage mm. and it suddenly blows hundred or one thousand dollars will that upset you it would upset me if we are managing that money together if we, if yes. we manage if we bring our salaries together in one post yes. every month yeah that's where it would bother me but in my own home it has never been the case we pay our bills we share our bills to um equal right he does the shopping and other things i do my own runnings as well so he, we still have that independence, financial independence amongst ourselves that I have to spend. If I want to blow 20,000 pounds tomorrow, mm -hmm. whether I've done, we're not owing anybody, we've met all our expenses. Obligations, so yeah. Nobody's business. Mecca will not stop me. Neither will I stop him. Yeah. Because it happens. But yeah. you know, I love traveling. But then again, so, that is traveling. Problem, European lifestyle. Yeah. So I would like to hear, I would like to hear from people who contributed into one post? Style or point of view. Yeah. What of the would yeah. it, would it? So I'd like somebody to give us a different view, a varied view from mine. Because mine is completely different from the a taibo just came in. So a taibo, can you just take it from here? Hello. Hello? Hi, Taibo. Hello. Welcome Hello. to the show. Yeah, hi. Oh, I'm spending money, eh? And yeah. I've never had money. I've never had money. So I've never had money problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think everybody has a right to spend the money the way they want to spend their money, as long as you've done the needful in the house. Exactly. Just as simple as that. Yeah. Mm. If I decide I want to buy one thousand pound pair, what of a pair of earrings, and I've done, I've filled. The, if my job is to fill the kitchen, and feed the children, and I've done my bits, then. I won't even be asking you, I'll be showing you. I'll be showing you what I've done with my money. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Mm. Simple, yeah. Thank you. You have a different view, OJ. I'm not really. Like I was saying, first of all, I have to know what he spent the money on. Accountant. Okay. And um, <laughs> it's not my business, actually. If he likes, let him spend, let him blow all his money on um, whatever. As long as everything has been taken care of, why should I bother? It doesn't make sense to make trouble. There are better things to do with your time now. Okay. okay. And um, then Vivian, any other person Vivian, with a different. Vivian, Chisa looks like somebody who. <laughs> who <got> fights. <laughs> 
No, contributing to the same cost with the husband. Is Chizo here? Oh. Chizo, are you still available? Yeah, Have hello. My own circumstances mm, are yeah, peculiar, yeah. so. Chizo, you and your husband, do you guys um put your uh, salaries in, into into the same oh, account? Oh, yes, oh, yes. That's, I, uh... I, knew, I knew that. <laughs> so, Winifred's question is, if your spouse spends 100 uh, bucks or 1,000 bucks on something and didn't tell you, would you be upset? Um, in as much as we, we, um, we put amounts together, we do not put everything together. We have a okay. stipulated percentage <laughs> where we put together. Okay. So, um, mm. but the, the, uh, our, our limit is that you can spend, but if it gets up to a certain threshold, then you should let the other person know. Okay. So it's, 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 it's not, it's not binding, but at the same time, it's not too free. Um, because it it gives you the, the the flexibility to to know okay I'm earning my money I'm spending the money I like but at the same time you have responsibility towards your family, uh, we should always we should always come first. So the money that we get pulled together uh, for both of us comes out irrespective of whatever is happening. Okay. And now and again we have situ like if it comes to a situation whereby maybe I'm I'm, I'm I was on mat leave. The money okay. gets pulled back to me so that I, I don't feel like I'm not working. Okay. Uh, it feels like I'm not working. Uh, uh, sorry, it feels like I'm, I'm not out of work and out of pocket. So I could stay for maternity leave as long as I wanted. And when I wanted to go back to work, I'd say, well, I'm going back to work. And now that I've gone back to work, that's why me going back for part-time, I still get money pulled into me. Um, I think the reason why we're able to come to that is because we want the balance. But having said that, there's been a situation whereby it's, it's the other way around where yeah. he's taking up a job that uh, wasn't for, for, the, for the money, it's for the self-actualization where you want to yeah, achieve I'm, some certain things. Yeah. But of course you take a pay cut. Yeah. It comes from me too. So yes. that's, that's how that's right. happened. Okay, that's awesome. Um, couscous, are you there? <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Happy New Year. Hi, Akuchi. We yeah. want to know, do you and your husband put in money together too? Or do you? Because we want to well, have different things. Yeah. With I and my hobby, we don't, we, we, we've got a joint account, but um, it's not, the account is not necessarily where we put in money for bills. Everybody, we have uh, different things that we all take responsibility for within oh, okay. the, 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 the house, yeah? But um, personally, I, I control my funds. But what, I do, what we do, what we do is, he knows what I earn. I know what he earns, and we everyone does what they they ought to do in the house. But yeah. if we need to individually spend big money on something, mm. it's 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 you know we usually tell each other, or I would that's, assume that's that good. he also tells me. Do you understand? Let me say I would assume that yeah, he also good. tells me that look, yeah. So that's that's how how it is. There is an on an unofficial kind of um knowledge that we ought to share what we do with and yeah not, there's an agreement that we ought understanding. to understanding yes yes right. that's the word yes mm. okay. all right over to you winifred okay all right so my next question is what keeps you up at night about your finances i did I, I know why I like asked. I said nothing. I, I, it, I'm I'm better off broke because if I'm broke, I sleep better. You know, I sleep well. If I have money, I'm looking for things to buy, what, who to give it to, what to spend it on. So if I don't have money, I'm happy. So far, there's I have gas in my car. There's food at home. The TV is on. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, if there's unpaid bills, <laughs> when I get it, it gets there. <laughs> I cannot come and kill myself. So that's why that's how I do it. How about how about thinking of old age? Uh, is there any plans for when you get to that age? Are you putting something aside? Yeah, luckily for yeah, yeah, luckily yeah, 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 yeah. I have a four hundred one k. I have um, I have a life insurance. I have um, like okay, you good. Know, the good thing about this side of the world, I'm sure it's in Nigeria, but it's for few people in Nigeria. But the good thing mm. about this is you have um, um, like uh, um, how do I call it? Like um benefits that they take a little yes. bit of money from your 
a paycheck every, you know what I mean? By the time my paycheck every comes, month, it's like yeah. 60, it's, I just get probably 60% because everything between taxes and the, the um, benefits, the AFLAC, the 401k, the, you know what I mean? It takes okay. everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So it covers me. So, okay, good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but that me or myself saving, mind. me or myself, I, I, I get weekly paychecks, right? I used to take off $100 every week. Mm -hmm. I used to get, every, I get paid every Friday. By that Friday afternoon, I moved that money back into my checking. So that's, I had to stop. I checked, I cut it from 50, uh, from 100 to 50. I still couldn't save it. I just stopped totally. I just stopped. I don't mm -hmm. bother myself because I can't do it. I just, I don't like seeing money in my account. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> you and call. Yeah, what keeps me awake at night? Actually, started keeping me awake at night um, recently. The love and of I remember, I remember that I'm getting old. <laughs> and being my kind of person, I like being comfortable. And being comfortable for myself and again, being able to help. If someone who is genuinely in need comes to me, I'll be able to offer that help. I hate it when you're in need and you come to me and I can't help. It drives me up. That could keep me awake. You think another man's problem is bothering me? Yes, it does. So the thought of that I haven't got a plan. And that plan is what most of this, um, what would I call them? The MLMs, multi-level media I'm on participants, talk, talk about all the time in terms of a stream, in, a stream of income. Even if when you're not working, okay, like in Mary Kay, they'll tell you <coughs> that income, even when you're sleeping, the money is coming. So I want to get to that level. Even if I don't go to work, that money is coming. And I made a decision earlier on in life that I wouldn't contribute to pension. Reasons being that I knew a few pensioners, a lot of pensioners talking about UK here and some of them, in, actually most of them in Nigeria, even though they've contributed to pension all their years, they are still worse off at old age. Just, so that made me think, what's the point going into pension scheme? So I'm not contributing to any pension scheme. I'm not contributing to any pension scheme. So I'm thinking, what would be my fallback on? Or what would I fall back on later on in life? I know I'm working, I'm still working. I may still be working till I'm 50 and over. Or definitely 60, 65, but again, if I have my plans in place, I wouldn't want to get to that extent, work that much when I get older. So I want to have something in, pl in place. What would that be? I'm still figuring it out. So at, at the end of this show, if you have any idea, please feel free to contact me. I'm still trying to figure out what I would put in place. Even if it's a business that is running, sometimes that it would be yielding income, no matter how little, but at, at least it's steady when I'm not working. Today, salary comes every month. Which I'm enjoying. So what happens when that salary stops? So it's been keeping coming? you up at night. It's been it does. Yeah. You? Since I turned wow. one, yeah. I, because growing up, I thought at forty, because then we thought oh, forty yeah. was a big thing. <laughs> I thought I'm sorted. I'll pack seven cars out there. It's forty is an old age. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So yes. all the things I had, those pictures I had in my head, I, it's not there. It's not there. Right? Yeah. That's I the reality of life. So, That's the reality of yeah, life. Yeah. Yeah. I read that point of reality some people realism. who got there some 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 looks like they have it all you know it looks like some people have it all but some people don't have what you have but they have that financial stability you know what i mean so I as know, we grow older we find out that life is life is a real reality tv it's not even mm. it's not even like so what, what, what i would add, what i would say to that is let's use the grace of god as christians by the grace of god i've achieved a great deal at my oh, age. Yes. I've, I've, been, I've been successful. I would, I, I am, yeah. not that I would say. I've been successful. So it's now attaining another level. But I don't think I've rushed it anyway. At 40, <laughs> when when people hit, people, they hit them at 25. At 40, I thought I've done well. I'm coming to the next level. So that keeps me awake at night. So if you know anything that will make put me back to sleep, let me know. I need to go back to sleep. Thank you. CBD. No, thanks. <laughs> I need to work hard. <laughs> Winnie. Yeah, hello. Mm -hmm. Any other person with a different um, opinion? 
Hello? No, go ahead to your next question. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. What would be your reaction when your spouse disagrees about money and just can't see eye to eye? What would be your reaction when your spouse disagrees about money and you both can't see eye to eye? Anybody? It's just a question for all. OJ, um, I haven't asked you this, is OJ. <laughs> Oh well, um, I'm having dealings with a salary earner who believes in planning. Okay, so before even the salary comes, there's an Excel sheet where everything is put. He tries to show me most times, but I don't know why. I just have this carefree um attitude about money. Nothing about money bugs me. Do you understand? Not that um I can't feel financially insecure if it is not there but maybe because i i got in contact with someone who plans from the get-go so it didn't make me learn to plan and then in as much as we have an account where housekeeping is put i have my own savings okay where i can freely spend like i mean right now i think my balance is 1k and it's nobody's business okay so mm. I don't, I don't see myself agreeing with him about anything. Can I ask you, Oje? Can I tends ask to you? Plan. Yeah, sure. Oje, can I ask mm -hmm. you to see if we can bring something out? Has there been any situation where <laughs> you want to spend on something and he says no? Mm -hmm. How have you felt about it? Never, never, never. Because I'm not okay. an impulse spender. You understand? Dubai. You know, when you're having dealings, <laughs> when you're having dealings with people, Take it or leave it. Mm. It rubs off on you. Yeah. Mm. You, you. You don't just get up and say, I want to be like this person. But when you've had dealings with someone over time, there are things you take mm. from that person and the person definitely takes from you. Um, mm. Like uh, my mom was, is, was um, she was a teacher or she's still a teacher. So, and you know how they behave. So my mom is not the spendthrift type. So I didn't grow up being extravagant, mm -hmm. okay? And then now I have someone who believes in planning. So I'm not also into spending. Most times, and if I've never bought something I couldn't afford. If I like this thing so much and I can't afford it, I move on. Mm, that's so me, yeah. the fact that the fact that I'm not owing anybody, no, no vendor would call me by Monday and say, I'm still waiting for my money. I sleep well. Mm. So there's never been a time I, I've never spent anything. That I think, yeah, okay. Fact, yeah. I don't even... I, I, I see where you're coming from. And looking at this question, uh, Winifred, if I may add them, if I may talk about it, looking at this question, the reaction when spouses disagree about money, it is common in the Western world where you find in most homes one person is the income earner. Sometimes it's by design, sometimes it's just by deceit. When the other person decides, I'll sit back since the work harder. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to nurses. No, no, no. Over here. No, you're right. You're right. That's, yeah. yeah. To nurses, um, it's very common where you have nurses in the family and they're willing to work and work and work. And you find that their partners relax. So that is where you can get this kind of reaction we're gauging now. Uh, mm -hmm. Or not apart from not, um, people in nursing as well, other people in other homes where Income lies on one person. It's just one this person, person bringing, bringing, bringing. Yeah. So if, if you, and you're not the that, one making the money, and you're spending anyhow. That pressure. Actually, yes. it will bring it. It will bring friction. Oh, definitely. So that's that's um, where they sit. Any view on this? Uh, that would be great. Um, I don't think the people in Oche Kitchen have ever fought over money. No. Uh, no. For me mine, personally, mine is, eh, mine is, I, if just I don't have money, I panic. I, I think, uh, um, I think, uh, I, I wouldn't say fight about money. I think both of us have agreed that we have, we've got different personalities. My husband and I, we have different personalities on how to spend money. We see money differently. Um, mm. I, I, I know I'm an impulsive spender naturally, but he, when, when you pull resources with someone who is not an impulsive spender who's someone who plans beforehand yeah. it kind of reins you in 
for 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 a money relationship i think it was better for me because actually i'm the one that's benefiting the more from it because i'm the one that ends up spending more but he's the one that ends up balancing yeah. but there comes a time where you know that both, both of you are contemporaries you almost you almost end up with each other why don't you just do one because if you keep spending you're gonna be trying to be the unreasonable one He's the one who thinks about investments and how to grow money out of things. I'm the one who's a bit laid back about things. Um, although he thinks about the investment, he'll have the idea, but I'm the one who actually makes it come to, you know, he yeah. is more of a thinking. The talker. I'm the, yes, I'm more of the doer. I am more of the doer. So if you think about the investment, we, he, we talk about it together. I'm the one who actually is going to implement it because I know that I, if he says that to me, it means, this is something I want us to think about. When I say, when he says I want us to think about, it means I keep telling him, don't say this is something I want us to think about. Just say this is something I want you to do because you know I know you can do it. But by the time I, I tell him, by, by the time you finish thinking about it, I would have done it. You see, that's I've done it. the way it kind of balances us. And, and I get what uh, Sophie was saying about people, you know, if you have income earners, somebody is laid back. Of course, that will bring problems. Because it it, over, over time, you, you know, the resentment builds, especially if both of you are meant to be pulling resources for, for two so, people. And, you know, in the developed world, it's hard. Everything, it goes and builds. And no one, the, the person is not pulling their Every weight. Every goddamn thing. Yes. If somebody else in the, part, in the partnership is not pulling their weights, it becomes too much for the person to be because they're always burnt out. They have to do extra shift to make the ends meet. So, of course, that will build resentment. Uh, but but I think uh, with planning and balance, weighing everything up. Mm. Um, Thank you. Have you guys I, noticed that it, it's been only the women and talking, and the men are just quiet, listening, so and Benson nobody has, has been, shifted anything. Benson has been typing. Benson, has been typing. Please Benson. say something. I've been typing his um his mm, um, I want somebody to say something. Okay, Coxon is here. Um, Anderson Obok is here. I don't know if Boxen, there's any other guy. Please, we want to hear from the men. At least it's been the women talking and saying and, ex and explaining and all of that and planning and executing. Let the men say something. Maybe men, one day, I'll, let let him him one day I'll, I'll ask him to join us. <laughs> yeah, he should oh, be nice. <laughs> That'd be nice. It, it's, um, one, anybody? All right, maybe they're not in a. Um, okay, I heard the man's voice. Same here. It was, it was a good moment that joined, I guess. Our um, men are in places where they can talk. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Um, what would your family do if one of you is laid off? Akuchi, are you there? I saw your hand was up, and we didn't have a chance to call you. Akuchi? Okay, Beta, are you there? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. Hi, Beta. Hey. How are you? Welcome to the show. Um, the question is, what would your family do if one of you is laid off? If one of us is laid off? Yes. Gosh, I hope not. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Honestly speaking, in my family, I've been lucky enough. My husband is usually the one who plans everything. Um, we do have savings. Um, there's a saying that you need to have at least six months of savings. Um, so, you know, if some, if you both lose your job or one person loses their job, yeah. you have money set aside to last you for six months so we've been trying to do something like that so um oh, if one awesome. of us, yeah if one of us loses their job I, i'm hopeful that we have some money set aside that will see us through until that person finds another job but we, we both really really have to work <laughs> yes yeah to make it thanks all right thank you um ataibo hello ataibo, are you there Yes, I am. <laughs> what would you do if one of um if one of you is laid off? Well, mine is going to be it's going to be hard because I'm a single parent at the moment. Mm. 
Yes. So if I'm laid off, or may I'm a child, I'm laid off. Without now, I come move to America, I'll come and live with you. <laughs> oh, well, we'll all be homeless together. <laughs> you no, know, I, I mean, right I think, now, think, I'm living under the tree. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think about it sometimes. That's why I tell people that oh my goodness, no matter goodness. how broke you are, it's always going to have um, good credit yeah. rating. Because yeah. once you've got good credit rating, you can always borrow. Yes. You yes. can talk to your bank and say, I'm laid off, you know, and they can give you a mortgage break and stuff like that. That's why no matter how broke I am, I always make sure I make minimum payments for anything and everything I have to pay for. So I've yeah. never asked the bank for a loan before for a credit card and I've been denied. Oh wow! You know, it's not a good, it's not a good way to, not a good backup plan, but it's all I have at the moment, mm. and I pray I never have to use it. But if push comes to shove, that will be my backup plan. All right, thank you. Okay, yeah. Oja, I'm gonna throw this. Um, I'm gonna throw this to you because Can your I husband say is the salary. To a can I say something to Ataibo? Yes, Ataibo, yes it would be nice to reach you to um, kind of help you do a personal financial strategy and planning so that you don't have to just have a fallback on credit, but perhaps on some emergency fund, if you if you don't mind. I don't mind just at all. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, all right, thank you. Oh, that's all nice. Right. You? Um, so, Oji, I'm going to throw this back thank to you. you. Um, since your husband is the, uh, the Anna in the family, God forbid if something happens to his income, what would your family do? Are you trying to say that I don't earn anything? No, I'm just saying he's the, he's the Anna in the family. He's the you Anna. Said, the big said, Anna. Like, like me, my husband is more. He, like, he earns more than me. So if something happens to him, he's going to be, you know, catastrophic. You know what I mean? So I'm saying, like, for somebody like you, what would it be for your family? Uh, there were recounts, there were audits, there were dozens of lawsuits. Okay. Well, Isuchi, well, can you mute yourself? Um, um, for us, if something happens to him, mm -hmm. God forbid, first of all, <laughs> because I wouldn't know my left and my right, but um, I know that he has put in some measures. Good. What he has done is to make sure that um, I'm signatory to everything. Okay. And um, he has been, from the get-go, from when we got married, he started saving in foreign currency because of the nature of our own money, mm -hmm. okay? So, and each time, and again, one thing he did that shook me, but um, was the moment he hit 40, he wrote his will, okay? That's awesome. And it, yeah, it was a bit awkward to me, but he said, um, people plan every day, but they never plan their death. Yes. Mm. Okay, and that anything can happen. Mm -hmm. that he has seen where families live in love and stuff and then the moment the man dies everything shatters you would yeah. never believe that this was this man yeah so and that it would be also that he he believes that yes we don't know when death comes but that when you're leaving should be a time to make mm -hmm. plans because mm -hmm. if he has exposed his children to a certain um standard Lifestyle. of living mm -hmm. yeah exactly mm -hmm. that it shouldn't be cut off abruptly because he's no longer there okay, okay. Good. so what he did was to expose me to everything that he has even his um life insurance i'm the sole beneficiary and then in the moment work started taking him around with all those trips we started making he simply called my daughter and said since your mother is following me all over the place should anything happen to us airborne mm. this is what you should know as a first child that's okay. beautiful. So, and That's then beautiful. we went to the bank as well and added my daughter's name to all the documents. So if, if he isn't there, my name is there. If both of us are not there, my daughter. And I can say, and he keeps, you know, he, he doesn't, like he keeps saying, his work wouldn't let him do business, you know, mm -hmm. properly. But he keeps buying stocks and shares and small, small things like that. And he makes sure he puts my name just to secure yeah. money here and there. I purposely so, asked you this question because I, I know I your think. husband. I know your husband will have an airtight um, 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 policy or procedure if anything happens. Yeah. So um, uh, mine is similar <laughs> to fact, yours, but moved, uh, the, the thing is that I'm self. not sure it's my name there. It might be for my mama's name that is there. So what? My name ain't there. <laughs> uh, of course, the my husband, Yeah, my husband is very. He's very meticulous. He's very. He's um. He's good with money. He could be out of job for one year and still do whatever he needs to do. That I applaud him. He I don't know how he can do yeah. it. But if, like, if, if it was me, if 
if the case was reversed, me and everybody will be under the tree. We'll be homeless. So the way he, uh, although he's an um, accountant, like one thing whatever, my husband did. Yeah. yeah. One thing my husband did was when we came back, we relocated back to Nigeria. Then, because before we left, his company was using AfriBank. I don't know what happened to the bank. So when yeah. we came back, salary accounts moved to Zenith. Yeah. So he went to Zenith Bank and told them that his wife is meant to be a signatory to this account. And Zenith said, no, 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 we can't do that. It's a salary account. It has to be one person. He didn't even argue. Yeah. Then we were in Lagos. He left Lagos, went straight to Port Harcourt to go and move his salary account to GT Bank. Yeah. Just for that reason. Yeah. He went to GT and said, if I move my salary account to you guys, is my wife going to be okay? And they, of course, I don't do anything on the account because that's where his salary comes. But should anything happen to him tomorrow, I wouldn't have problems. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, Mama, take it away. Mama, go with your question. Mama, you're okay. muted. Okay, sorry. Yeah, ask your questions. Yeah. My question. Let me add something to the last question. What would happen if one person is being laid off? Yeah. What would I, I've had that experience in my home and I've been out of job for a while when I took redundancy. My partner has been out of job when he moved job and all whatnot. So coincidentally, we didn't do anything differently, but prior to those times, I wouldn't have sat down and said that we saved for one year in case this happened. But things really took, or things were just in, um, how do I put it? Things happened the way they would happen. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. I understand, yeah. So I think, it's good yeah, planning. Think it's good. I know you're a very good planner. Good, you're, yeah. you're a very good planner. Good you plan. yeah. A very good planner. Because I aim, I aim not to live above my means. Yeah, you're a very I good planner. Apart from that, yeah, you're a good planner. Good. You plan very well, yeah. Thank you. I never knew I was. No, I know. Okay. Thank you. You plan you. very well, yeah. <laughs> I like that. All right, my next question is, what is your financial goals? And do you feel like your family is on track financially to achieve your goals? Um, I'll, this question, I like to like it to be taken in two folds. If you have a joint financial plan, or if you don't, if it's on your own, do you think you're on track in achieving your goals? Um, who would take that? Who would like, Viv, do you want to speak to us about it? Because I think you're into this financial thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, every, everyone should have um, a financial plan or uh, do what we call personal financial strategy for their family, where they look at their assets, their liabilities, their incomes, and number of children, their monthly or weekly expenses, depending on how they operate. Um, have a mm. good budget and actually retirement plans, all those come into the plans that people should actually make. And um, it takes uh, a, a person with some good knowledge or sound background to guide because somebody might say, oh, I have a life insurance or if anything happens, my children, but you might just have accident life insurance, which when you die, if it wasn't by accident, they get nothing. Um, some people may have different things, but they, they don't even understand. Some people have 401k, like those of us here in the United States. But where is it? Where is the money invested? I know lots of people lo lost money in their 401k during the financial crisis because it was all in stocks. So people need to know who is managing their money, where it is. And mm -hmm. everyone should actually have a financial plan. And the major you have to have an emergency fund like someone already mentioned earlier. 
and the financial plan you have to have to have the basic things it's like it works like a tripod you need to know what comes first some people start investing when they haven't got emergency fund when they haven't paid off their debts so those are things that have a proper sequence or order that people should know so um, there, there are many people here, so I can't take too much time. Viv so Oje, um, after, after the show, we stay I on as on um, Oje Kitchen <laughs> over time. So you can explain more to everybody, okay? For those okay. of us who hang around. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, um, uh, can I say something, Akuchi? Yeah, go on. Please. Yeah, hi. Yeah, um, it, what she said is um, very, she made a very valid point because it's not enough to just have um, insurance you know when you have insurance you need to know what your insurance covers you for if like for life, me exactly for me I, I have two insurances with one company mm -hmm. and one is for critical illness so there are certain things that are covered in critical illness and then I also have insurance in case um, you know I, I die or anything what my my family would get and my husband also got that and it's also good to also look at your mortgage ensuring your mortgage in such a way like um what, what my husband did was he he's the higher earner you know between the two of us definitely um if he were to stop earning and we were to just rely on my on what i get we would as a family we would be in trouble so the, the mortgage what, 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 <laughs> So in terms of our mortgage, you know, what, what he did is, God forbid, you know, if tomorrow anything happens, debt or anything, his insurance will be able to pay at least, I think, what, what's the, what, what the payout would be would cover one and a half of yes. our mortgage. Yeah. So if anything happens, first things first, we will not be homeless. Beautiful. And then, you know, so that's, yeah. So what she was saying about that insurance thing, it really makes sense. Even if we have insurance, let us know exactly what that insurance covers if yeah. you're ill and you can't work you have a heart attack you, yes. you you get amputated or something what happens would you still be able to live the lifestyle that you're living now yes. and in terms of stocks and shares oj talked about stocks they are fantastic um i, I, I I'm, I'm trying to get into stocks if we were talking about it the other day stocks and shares yeah. I'm, I'm trying to because my, my husband does it quite a lot but the thing about it that i am a bit skeptical about is it's it's a bit risky there are certain ones that you invest in and you can lose everything you know so i'm still trying to work out how to really get into it though i know some people are very vast in the knowledge and they know how to measure the, the markets so yeah. yeah that's my take on that uh, we started we started talking about um stock business as at the back of what i said we found out that we're almost yeah. 50 we don't have a plan anyway that's exactly we'll that exactly. <laughs> a, exactly a typical example on this insurance issue is if you've bought an insurance on critical health, critical illness, and obviously with COVID-19, you will have critical illness before you die. It will never cover what it. Is it? <laughs> it will cover pandemics and yeah, and all sorts. So it's worth no. knowing. And like here, we have short-term disability. Here, you can buy short-term disability. You can buy long-term disability. Like I have cancer, short-term and long-term disability. So if anything oh, happens good. to me, yeah, I have cancer is different. It's from Aflac. Then the short-term disability, you get paid from day one till like 90 days. Then the long-term disability, you know, kicks in. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, there's different, different things you have to, yeah. So go ahead, Mama, before we end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does anyone want to add to this? Or oh, Izu, do you want to talk about this? I think um, um, with regards to pension and insurance, um, mm. because I work for the health, National Health Service, it comes as part of the package that we, we earn. So if, if anything should happen to me now, my family gets a payout. Yes. Um, mm. And if, any, if I should get a critical illness, I can have six months of paid leave to address it. And during which time I can yeah. decide to do anything I want to. Um, mm. I suppose with, with insurance and investments, I'm going to talk about us personally. I'm the one who does investments and he's the one who does the cryptocurrency. That's his, yeah. his own niche. 
Um, he's been doing it now for like four years. Uh, but the one who does the stocks and shares. We're going, we'll be speaking to him then. <laughs> Sorry, we'll speak to him to teach us. If, <laughs> if he was here, Bitcoin. he more about it than I, I do because he knows more about that yeah. than I. But that's the, uh, the booming investment, okay. what he's talking about. Yeah. All right, moving on. And the absence of any other contribution to this question. Um, my last question is, what's one money habit that you admire about your spouse or friend or relative, whoever, what money habit? For me, no, no, I haven't picked on anyone. I think the one I admire is not understanding the other plants, what they do with money, how much money they have. I admire that, I don't know so much. <laughs> and you don't know how the money was made. I know, hard work. So. <laughs> Um, anyone? Because That's there are some people with money and we don't know how their money was made. Hi. Does anyone want to know what money habits they admire in anyone? Could be Mine is a saver. Mine is a saver. Um, he, save, mm -hmm. he saves. He saves and he plans and he takes care of business. Like that's that's all I can say. Yeah. Mine is my, mine is financially he takes care of business. Oh, mine is an intentional saver. So for for. For, for him, he, he doesn't have like a new year resolution or blah, 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 or anything like that. He just has, he could say, well, yes. I want us to buy this. And he starts saving towards it. And he's quite, when he, when he's, it's, he's intentional towards his saving and towards his investments. That's how he is. That's, if there's something I learned from him yeah. is how to be intentional about saving and investment. All so right, that, that's you. been Mine saves as well. And um, I like that about him. Like um, last week we were talking and he said to me, oh, there are things I need to make some major expenses by the end of January. And I said to him, ah, uh, what about the money? Because like I said, he saves in hard currency. So I said to him, why don't I go and withdraw some and change before the money you're expecting comes? He was like, he was trying to give it a thought. And I said, ah, uh, uh, in Ebola and you say, Apologies to the non Igbo speaking people, but I'll, I'm going to explain. You tell people, mm -hmm. okay, mm. don't touch that drink. I'm, I'm using it for something. At the end of the day, be it burial, be it wedding, be it to entertain your guests. At the end of the day, the money, the um, drink was going to be taken. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. So I said to him, yeah, people say for the rainy day, this is our own rainy day. Let me go and withdraw the money because those kind of errands. They sweet me. You just want to spend that <laughs> that that hard hard safe money. All right. So I like the fact that you know, despite the fact that he is a huge saver and um, he doesn't have problem saving, he he doesn't spend on them just like that. He still justifies the expenses. And one thing I like about him is, despite being this prudent, if you see me with anything that is expensive and classy, he bought it. Because there are people that will be saving and they'll become misers. Ah, without even knowing it. it. Mm. Mama, you understand? Was, yeah, there are people that, that will be saving and you, you would want to have a headache because you need them to at least calm down. Yeah. And, yeah, and mm. I have made the fact that he balances it. That yeah, yeah. I, I want to say that again. Because... Uh, sorry, can I cut in yeah. here? Um, some um, you yeah, said Jenny. some, you said something about people who are miserly to an extreme. Mm. I would look at um, I'll give my friend as an instance. She intentionally saves fifty pounds every month. She said she noticed for a very long time she had been spending on her hair. So she said to herself um, to give an average of 50 pounds as what she spends on her hair. So every month she tucks 50 pounds away and she nets like 600 pounds intentionally. Awesome. Mm. Apart from other savings, this is one thing she noticed about herself. She might not really like look so great she has a very healthy hair, washes it, lifts it natural, brushes it, does her weaving herself, and she will wear wig mm. or whatever. So it depends on the occasion. 
this is how she saves little money off her hair. So she hasn't really like um, worked out how to be saving on her fingernails. I was inspired. I didn't like it initially, but I said to myself, 60 pounds, um, sorry, 50 pounds every month. That's good. Yeah, That's a start. Two, it's a start. It's a start. For over two years now, she does everything she likes, books holidays, but her hair, she's made up her mind. She wasn't going to be spending so much. So he doesn't like work. He doesn't really like work like uh, 600 every year because she will take out from it, buy her hair stuff. Maybe if she invested in a week or something, but it was basic. It made you realize how much goes out without um that you take for mm. granted so i look at mm. it that, that um I, I look at it that way and it helps me try and pull in all those taking for granted money we spend anyhow so it made mm. me cut on one or two expenses so um this new year if anybody can suggest more that would be great all right, so hang on to that thought. We're going to go to um over time and we can talk about um tips and uh, resources you. that can help one another. Thank you. So my mama, can you end the show? We're going to overtime. So okay. we'll yeah, say that the show, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, we'll do overtime, yeah. So, All right. Um before yeah, before we go, I'll I'll read one comment yeah, before okay. I, I round up. Um, Ati said, I had a husband that had a five to 10 year plan, but not deal with the present. So it goes a long line, a long line of those who will save and save and not deal with exactly what they have facing them. Thank you again for joining us. It's been an interesting um, discussion. Sit back for the overtime with Ocha Kitchen because uh, you've got lots to learn and you want to steal ideas from so many people now. But before we go, I'll tell you what we have. There's a noise from somewhere. Sorry. Is it from me? No? That's all right. And um, Fogo, we'll tell you, we want to show you what we have for next week. So, she'll be there to watch. Oche Kitchen Discussions and her guests will present to you slavery in Africa. What's the difference between slavery and human trafficking? Find out on Saturday, 16th of January, 2021. 8 p.m. Nigerian time, 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. East Standard time, 1 p.m. Central Standard time, and 12 p.m. Pacific time. Join us live on Facebook via Zoom. Remember, there's plenty of room in Zoom for all of us. Be a part of it. Okay, so sit back, sit back. Sit back, sit back.